And, I, and Ahab told Queen Jezebel that Elijah had done and that he had strangled the prophets of Baal. She sent this message to Elijah. You killed my prophets and now I swear by the gods that I am going to kill you by this time tomorrow night. So Elijah fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a city of Judah, and left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day, and sat down under the broom bush and prayed that he might die. Stop right there. Now we have to understand that here was a lot, that the spirit of Jezebel, is. she just, oh, think of this, Jezebel only sent her voice. She didn't, she didn't send any chariots after him. She didn't send no men after him. Only thing Satan can do is send his voice. And what we do, we take the voice. We listen to the lie of the enemy, Rudine. We listen to him when he tells, oh, you ain't going to mount to nothing. You ain't going to never be nothing. You're not going to finish this. You're not going to. That's just the voice of the enemy. Don't get moved by just the voice. Get more moved by the voice of God. At that time when you hear the enemy telling you what you cannot do, rise up with the word of God and declare to him what God promises has said unto you. Don't listen to the voice. She, she just hot air. Listen to this. It says, Elijah's forced departure from Israel, from Judah and the wilderness is an example of those who for righteous sake have been ill-treated and forced to wander in desert mountains, caves, and holes in the ground. Like Elijah, there are prophets who have had to leave their churches, preachers their pulpits, professors their classrooms, and lay people their work because they stood against sin, spoke according to God's word, and followed the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Great is the reward in heaven. What, it, nowadays, no, we're not running in caves or what have you, but what, what do you have? We have stood up. There are going to be times when you have to stand up in a workplace in this corporate system and not be threatened by, they go, by, by the paycheck that they're giving you. What have you, what bell have you bowed down to in the college system? What bell have you bowed down to in your workplace? What bell have you bowed down to in the high schools and the middle schools? What bell have you bowed down to in your families? When and when we stand up for righteousness. And especially in corporate America. And when they tell you to do something that you know that goes against your God. And you say, no, I will not do it. I used to tell them the same God that got me this job is the same God that will find me another one. But we're so afraid because that's why God had to come in and say, I am your source. The job is just the resource. I will not bow down to the Baal gods of this day. Don't be tricked because we're reading the Old Testament. We say, well, we don't, I don't worship no statues. I don't work. Are you worshiping that woman? Are you worshiping that man? Are you worshiping the alcohol bottle? Are you worshiping the cigarettes? What are you that you're worshiping? What is it that you're worshiping? Elijah overcame by his awesome discouraging grief, prayed that God would deliver him from the heavy prophetic burden and let him depart to his heavenly rest. We're going to see that when you get to, when the burdens become so heavy upon you, that's not the time to quit. That's the kind, the time to turn the burdens over to God. That means that you're, you know, you don't took the burdens far enough. It's just like I can see if I was carrying, don't let me hold your, hold your purse. And, it's, and, it, and I'm weighed down in the burden. So, and, and here it is. Sometimes God said, let me help you. You said, no, I got it. 
You know, my son see me and say, can you, prophetess, can I get your bag? And I say, no, I got it. That's what we do. No, I got it. And so if I told him, but if I go, why can't we be this way? I know I'm carried down and weighed down with the burden. Why can I just come to, listen, now, can you help, can you get that for me? Why we even got to wait for somebody to, see, I'm trying to get us Christians to go. Why we got to wait for somebody to see you looking all ugly on your face, you all crying and weeping, your knees all scarred up, for somebody to come and say, girl, what happened to you? Why not when you feel the spirit, the, the, the darkness and stuff trying to come against you, you don't pick up the telephone and say, hey, I need some prayer. Hey, I feel like the enemy is riding my back. Can you connect with me in the name of Jesus? Glory be to God. That's why I like the song we played on Wednesday. Why are we always waiting to let the devil knock us upside our head? Sometimes go in his camp. Glory be to God. Go ahead, son. I've had enough, he told the Lord. I've been there. We all don't been there. After today, we ain't going to do it no more. Go ahead. Take away my life. I've got to die sometime, and it might as well be now. Then he laid down and slept beneath the broom brush. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him to get up and eat. He looked around and saw some bread baking on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and laid down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, for there is a long journey ahead of you. So he got up and he ate and he drank, and the, flood and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb and, 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 and the mountain of God, where he lived in a cave. But the Lord said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have worked very hard for the Lord God of the heavens, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you and torn down your altars and, you, and killed your prophets, and only I am left. And now they are trying to kill me too. Stop right there. Here's what, this is what we do all the time. I said it last week. We think that we're the only one going through. We think that we're the only one going through. Now here it is. See, Elijah put himself in a cave. God didn't put him in a cave. We put ourselves many times into that spirit of depression. God didn't put us in depression. And sometimes even the enemy, because look at it. All the enemy did was say, I'm going to kill you. And Elijah went fleeing. Think of that. How many times God has used us to do great exploits? And then only days later, we forget about what God used us to do, and we turn and run and hide in a cave. We forget about how God paid your light bill. We forget about how God paid your car note. We forget about how God healed you. And we think that it's over. He said, God dealt with the discouragement of Elijah in an understanding and compassionate way. He allowed Elijah to sleep. He nourished him with food. He visited him with an awe-inspiring revelation of his power and presence. He provided additional revelation and direction. He gave him a faithful companion with a kindred spirit. In other words, when God's children are discouraged in a place God has put them, they can, they can through Christ, ask God to give strength, grace, and encouragement. What can you ask God to give you? Strength, strength grace, grace, and encouragement. And encouragement. Notice the word there, ask. Oh my God. Ask. We can ask God. We don't have to wait and have a pity party. We can ask God for strength, for grace, and encouragement to make them adequate for the situation. The same grace that saved you is the same grace that will keep you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we have to understand that. Glory. Go ahead, son. 
Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. Mm. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he, he wrapped his face in his scarf and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, Why are you here, Elijah? He replied again, I have been working very hard for the Lord God of the armies of heaven. But the people have broken their covenant and have torn down their altars. They have killed every one of your prophets except me. And now they are trying to kill me too. Now wait, what do we hear there? Me. Me. Ah, that me. Me. Selfishness. See, we got to get selfishness out of there. Because it wasn't about Elijah. He should have known that when he, when he came against the false promise of Baal. It was about standing up against righteousness for God's sake. Amen. Go ahead, son. Then the Lord told him, go back by the desert road to Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel to be king of Syria. Then anoint Jehu, son of Nishia, to be king of Israel. And anoint Elijah, the son of Saphat and Abel Metho, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hazel shall be killed by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu shall be killed by Elijah. And incidentally, <laughs> come on, God. there are 7,000 men in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal nor kissed him. Elijah went and found right Elijah. God had to come in and remind him, there are over 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee to God. And you thinking that you're the only one with a mission from God. Don't get it twisted. Just like a glorified fellowship international church, we know that we call with a mission that God has given us, but we know that there are some others out there that believe the way that we believe and that will walk in holiness and righteousness and that will collide with the spirit of darkness. So we're not going to give up. We're not going to give up. So Elijah had to understand, and God is speaking to us today, when he's giving you a mission to make an impact in the kingdom of God, you must realize that the forces of darkness are going to be about their father's business, which is Satan. But you must know that you got to be about your father's business because God got your back. All of heaven is backing you up. Amen? All of heaven is backing you up. Notice it, it says God directed Elijah to anoint Elijah to be his successor. Note that not only were priests and kings anointed to their respective offices, but prophets as well. Elijah was to minister to Elijah at Robo Shanda, help Hazel, the king of Syria, and Jehu, the king of Israel, defeat the enemies of God, proclaim, proclaim the word of God to a faithful remnant. See, I know what. People get mad at me sometimes because I tell, I say, I'm called for the righteous. I'm called to encourage the faithful remnant of God. Because it's not how you start out, it's how you're going to end. I'm so sick and tired of hearing I'm married to the backslider. Why can't you get with God and stay with God? Why do you keep returning like a dog back to his own vomit? Making it like God is a problem. That's enough power. There's enough blood and the word of God to keep you saved and sealed to the day that Christ come back. We're in a different age. We're in a different time. We're not living like 50 years ago. Satan knows what his mission is. Since he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
steal, kill, and destroy. Talk about making a mission. How can you young men that's in that college at KU bring an impact to where you at? What mission will you make in the school system of Belton? What impact will you make in the college of Emporia with the minds of so many intellects that don't know God? What impact would you make for Christ in your workplaces? I've all God gave me this revelation a long time ago. Make your workplace a pulpit, make your home a sanctuary, and make your heart his altar. And if you make your heart an altar for God, what would you lay on it? What would you lay on it? Knowing that God is a holy God and a righteous God. What would you bring to lay on his altar? You can lay your burdens at his altar. But would you bring all the other defiled stuff, come before a holy God, and bring that to him? I think not. I think not. I think not. I think not. Elijah and Elijah's ministry covered a span of 75 years. Hear me, daughters and sons who've been walking with me closely. We just begun. We just begun. 75 years, Pastor Adam, you got to keep me 75 years more. We just begun. GBF, 75 years more. We just begun. Do you guys see that? Elijah and Elijah's ministry covered a span of 75 years during the reign of Ahab, Azar, Jeroboam, Jeremiah, Jehu, Joaz, Joel. Elijah was a faithful servant to the older prophet and was known as the one that poured water on the hands of Elijah. I share this and I ask you, I watched this movie, The, the King's Speech. Pastor Adam said, I'm always, I, like, I like to watch the movies on um, that are from actors from London or what have you. And at the end of that movie, I was so, I, I, tears came to my eyes because I seen it with a prophetic eye. That as King George got ready to step out, if you haven't watched, you need to watch it, he had an impairment with speech. And the gentleman that he had, that had became his friend, he was the one that helped him to be able to stand before a nation. And when he had reached that point, I, what impressed me, Pastor Adam, is that his friend, he stood back in the background, knowing that it was all because of the work that he did that caused this king to be the king. He didn't even believe that he can be a king. I thought it because of many times, I know it passed out in our life, there were many times when we probably didn't think that we was meant to do this, but there were those that had faith in us. And they was willing to stand in the background so that God can be used through us. And I thought about that name of that movie so prophetically, the king's speech, that when our kings speak, we will be able to stand before a nation and having defeated all our failures and said that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Go ahead, son. So Elijah went and found Elijah, who was plowing a field with 11 other teams ahead of him. He was at the end of the line with the last team. Elijah went over to him and threw his coat across his shoulders and walked away again. Elijah left the oxen standing there and ran after Elijah and said to him, First, let me go and say goodbye to my father and my mother. 
and then I'll go with you. Elijah replied, go on back. Why, why all the excitement? Elijah returned to his oxen, killed them, and used wood from the plow and built a fire of roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the other plowmen, and they all had a great feast. Then he went to Elijah as his assistant. King Behaled of Syria. Now I want you to just stop right there. I, I should have stopped you. I got crossed over the other realm for a minute because I was just stuck back here about this 12 yoke of oxen. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and bore their flesh with the instrument of the oxen and gave them to the people and they did eat. Um, if you go and look in, in the commentary, really Elijah was trying to really discourage him. And, but Elijah recognized that there was anointing upon him. Some of you in this room have had times, and I'm, I'm quite sure because I, I, I flow that way. See, because if I can talk you out of something, then you ain't meant to have it. If, if I can break you and you make you get mad at me that you want to run, then you ain't, you ain't made of anything. Because if you can't handle my anointing, then you can't handle what's out there. And many times we don't understand that. You think a man or woman of God is there to be your friend or what have you. No, we're there to shape and equip you so that when you really stand against the real giants, that you'll be able to stand flat-footed and won't move. Amen. I tell my children all the time, you're 18 years in my household. I'm preparing you for boot camp. Because the lions and the tiger and bears, they're not in here. They out there. How are you going to stand out there? How are you going to make it out there in the college system where so many of you fail? It's documented over 80, 75 to 80 percent of Christian boys and girls go to college and they no longer know their God. Bowing down to the bell, God. But God is calling forth a remnant of people. A remnant of people. I want to see this quickly because I'm very visual. Give me six men, six women, 21 years old, 21 and up. Six men here, six women here. 21, if you're 21 up, six women over there, six men here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's good. I like the age group in there. I want you to picture, pass Adam, come here. There was, he had 12, there was that, the prophetically that 12 yoke of of oxen and he was there were some other individuals that was there too but they didn't recognize the anointing deek when the man came on the scene i think i taught you guys that that every time they say do you know that your 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 master is going to leave live up, leave up instead of them going along with him elijah we got to be able to have a spiritual eye why is it that there was 12 with jesus but only three was able to go with him to the Mount of Transfiguration. It wasn't that they was perfect because Peter, y'all know Peter always got in trouble with God, but it was something about Peter's character. It was something about John. It was something about James. It's that personality that God is looking to take to him to the great and high places with God. And so I begin to say, why is it, I don't have to just take and pass out or come down, pass out. We don't just have to take, he don't just have to take Three men with him. Why can't he take all the men with him? I don't just have to take have three women that see the vision. Why can't I take all the women that see the vision? Pastor, I'm take your coat off and, and start from down there. If all the rest of them know he's going to keep it, babe, babe, go down here. And just one by one, just throw your coat. Because he took the mantle and he laid, just go down the line. See, this one running off with him. See, that's what I'm saying. See that? <laughs> and just go down the line. 
He, Elijah could have did this as, with all of them if they all would have seen the vision. If they all would have seen. There's enough anointing to go around. Amen. There's no, no need to be no isms, no schisms. There's enough anointing to go around for everybody that desires to be connected. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Elijah had, you got to have the Elijah personality. Elijah wouldn't let the man shake him. Hallelujah. Elijah said, wait a minute, I'm going. He, he went and cut up everything he had, and then he fed and gave it to everybody else. And he said, I don't need nothing else, because now I'm with the anointing. Hallelujah. I went, because it does, oh, Korebe. In the book of Isaiah 10, 27, remember we're talking about oxen. Have you ever seen an oxen? It has a yoke around his neck. Amen. And, it's, and it says, the anointing destroys the yoke. You no longer have to be in bondage when you get connected with the real anointing. Hallelujah. It will, it will break every bondage off of you in the name of Jesus. So Elijah found out and got connected. And that's what mission impact. We have a mission that Pastor Adam said that we need to do for outreach as corporately as a congregation, but also impact where you at individually. Pastor, you had something you want to say? I just want y'all, everyone is really thinking about you, where you I, I want you to see the revelation that, that what he did was he, he took his ox. He didn't need it anymore. Right. It, it, don't you see when, when he took his ox and cut it up and, 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 and made a cookout with it. Amen. You get to understand is when he took his overflow and he said, I don't, he, what God has called me to do, I'm not going, I'm going to leave, I'm, I'm not going to leave it here. I'm going to share the, the extra with everybody else. And, and this is what the mission impact is all about. God is ready to bless you. <laughs> But until you're ready to cut with your extras and share with somebody else, you're not going to get it. But this in the mission impact, it's outreach time. We're about to give, he's going to give you overflow. Say overflow. And you're going to have an ox that you're able to cut up and share with everybody else. Say, I'm getting ready to share. In Jesus' name. So here's what God is saying to everyone. It said the 7,000 Israel who did not bow their knees, say, I will not bow my knees. To any other God but my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They did not bow their knees to bow or joined by the suffering faithful of all generations who overcome. I say you we are more than conquerors. There's reward for those that speaks of in the book of Revelation that overcome this system, who overcome backsliding compromise and worldliness among God's people and who persevere in love, faith and obedience to God and his word. They are those who refuse to be caught up in the evil ways of the world, who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ, who are persecuted because of righteousness sake, who love God fervently, who steadfastly remain the narrow way. Amen. Through scripture, it is the faithful and overcoming remnant. There's a remnant that God, he's not coming back for the masses. There's a remnant that is known by the Lord. God promises to keep them by his power through faith and the lamb will lead them home. You will go out into this world to make a mission on a mission for God and be impactful. All eyes closed, heads bowed. Everyone in here has a ram or a spear that they function in. I don't care what your job is, whether you're a janitor, whether you're a school teacher, whether what have you, but God has you in that place to be an impact for him. Um, I, Jessica shared her testimony with me, and 
she, she talked about how she's seen Justin and she says, I want what he has. Here he is in the college system and impacting another college student. They drive all the way from Emporia. She drives from Emporia and sometimes from Wichita to come here. Because God is connecting her here because he wants her to make an impact. This is just the beginning. It don't have to be great and super, but if just where you're at, if you get this revelation that was given out in these last three weeks, to make an impact, mission impact in your workplace, in your community, in your home, no longer allow God to see you compromise. No longer fail Pray to Satan and his world system. Tell Jezebel, you're not the boss of me. Men of God, destroy and break off the Ahab spirit in the name of Jesus. That you'll walk and be the kings and priests that God has called you to be. That what God is doing and speaking to you right now is for a generation that has yet to come out of your loins, says the Lord God Almighty. A generation that is to come after you. That will be even greater and mightier than those that we have standing in the earth ram today on the front lines. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Can we get